Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Board Games Hitting My Table. This is where I talk about all of the games that I have played over the last couple of weeks. This episode covering the first half of June 2024. Now I don't have too many games here to talk about. And to be honest, I don't remember a lot of details about these games, but I'll talk about them regardless. But before I get started on the games, I want to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, keyender.co.uk, who are my go-to online retailer. And if you use the link in the show notes or the QR code, then you can get 5% off your first order. But let's start with Through the Desert. So this one is uh, the newest version or the reprint of the classic Through the Desert by Riley Knizia. Uh, this has been reprinted by All Play in a nice small box actually, so I'm quite happy that it comes in a you know, very manageable size. It's not going to take up too much shelf space. And this is kind of the, the forefather of the Knizian uh, route building style games where in this one you're extending these caravan or these caravan of camels to kind of section off areas of the board or to reach these different tiles to collect victory points or these kind of oases to get some more victory points. Uh, it's a beautifully elegant game to be honest. Um, and you know, if I if I have to kind of nitpick this version I'd say that the the pieces feel a little bit chintzy, they feel a little bit cheap compared to the older version that I played, but it is nice to have this more available now because it has been out of print for quite some time. And to be honest, it goes to show how much my game tastes have changed over the years because I recall playing this one probably five or six years ago and me feeling somewhat underwhelmed with it because at that time I was so into kind of my heavier Euros, was trying like the heavier the better really. But then, you know, over the years I've really started to kind of nailed down on the kind of style of games that I like. And I, I really do prefer these simple, elegant games with very little rules overhead, but still has some depth in it. And this is kind of like the, the textbook example of a game like that. So yeah, really enjoyed getting this one back to the table. Definitely has climbed up in terms of um, you know, my ratings over the years. And this definitely earns a ranking now. So um, I will put the ranking below and um, hopefully you can monitor it to see if it will go up or down over the years. So that is Through the Desert. I've not tried any of the modules for this one yet either. Uh, onto some smaller games, um, we played a very quick three-player game of Trio just to uh, end uh, a games day. Uh, this is a really good game of Trio, actually. Um, it's a if you're not aware of what Trio is, it's essentially a memory style game where you are revealing cards from players' hands or from the centre of the table if you're playing with um, you know lesser uh, player count to try and reveal um, you know, three of the same number essentially, but you have to kind of work from the extremities in. So you have to go work from the higher numbers and all the lower numbers into the middle numbers. And it was quite interesting because we both came down, I think, oh, sorry, all three of us came down to having um, a couple of pairs or a pair of trios. So we were all looking for that final piece. Um, I think I managed to squeeze the win, uh, but I do like this one, you know, very silly memory style game, but it just works for what it does. We played a two-player game, which is a two-player only game, of Marabunta. So one of my favourite games from 2023. And this was the first time I played the game with my brother. And we're very equally in terms of our, our kind of experience and skill level. So this was a very tight game. Um, I can't quite remember who squeezed the word. I think I lost the game in the end. Um, but still, the, uh, the division became very tight. And you know, every single die that you were allocating to another player and um, was of paramount importance. So I really do love the way this game is so perfectly weighted in terms of offering you those tough decisions from the get-go. If you're not aware of this game, it's essentially a, um, a I split you choose area control game. And those two mechanisms just harmonize so well in this game. And it's just like the perfect implementation of those two mechanisms. And I can't really see how they would have done this better. So you're just rolling dice. You are I'm writing numbers in certain zones. Uh, you're taking off these little bonuses. Uh, and basically, you can even increase the yield of victory points in the regions that you are controlling, which does add a little bit more interest to the game. But fantastic game, this one. Um, yeah, brilliant two-player game and definitely a worthy uh, game for a, a high degree or a great, a great premium um, two-player collection. Speaking of wonderful two-player games, um, I taught my girlfriend at Seven Wonders Jewel you know, for the first time. Um, I played without any of the expansion material. You know, Recently, I mentioned that I've been introducing the Agora expansion. I certainly did not include that this time. Um, and you know, I think it went down well. Um, we had a good back and forth in terms of um, my girlfriend going for those science symbols really early. Um, I managed to just hold her off on that. And I managed to um, 
going to put some pressure on in terms of the military. It did end up coming down to uh, victory points and I actually lost. So hopefully um, that shows that I taught the game well. Uh, but yeah, this is still one of the best two-player games. A game that I never really tire of. Um, and it's nice to, to know that, I, that I've got both the expansions that I could choose to add in or exclude whenever I see fit. So that is Seven Wonders Jewel. Uh, I also taught my girlfriend uh, Get On Board. So this is... The original New York and London map, so I have got the other one as well. Um, I did play the original where you get penalised for the congestion. Um, and I think that's what ended up costing um, my girlfriend the most because she got a lot of congestion at the end. Um, and maybe tried to bite off a bit more than she could chew. Now, don't get me wrong, I didn't do very well at all at this game, which is normally the case. You know, I'm not good in this game on average. Um, more, the, the last game that I played of this one... Um, I did actually manage to get a really good score, but I've seemed to have reverted back to uh, my low scoring now. But I really do like this um, this Sashi game. Uh, really cool filler, very charming, very mellow, and um, it's just uh, always a hit for me. So that is uh, Get On Board at New York and London. Uh, on to a few bigger ones now. Uh, I managed to get Seasons back to the table. So... Um, if you've been watching the channel recently, you might have known that I have released a review of Seasons. And after playing this some more uh, again, um, I think you know my thoughts that I said in those reviews or that review is definitely accurate in the way I feel about it. Um, I really don't like, I'm not saying I don't like, but I would prefer to draft the cards as the game goes on rather than having to do a closed draft at the start of the game, which leads you down quite a particular track. Then you've, you know, you, you're kind of stuck to the cards that you have. There are ways of getting more, but it's not quite enough for me. Now, gameplay-wise, I think this game is really cool. I love the way everything works. I love the dice drafting. Um, I love the card play. I love some of the combos. But I'd love to have a better degree of hand management rather than you know just mostly dealing with what you've got at the start of the game. Um, but it's a really cool engine builder. And as I said in my review, this one is just not going to hold up against the more recent Veil of Eternity, which offers a lot of the same style of gameplay but in a lot neater, smaller and more kind of um, finely designed or finely tuned design, I think. So, yeah, sadly, this one's just fallen short of Veil of Eternity, but still, I'm really glad I got to play this one because it was on my radar for a long time. But the only reason I can't, I wouldn't say I can't recommend it, but the only reason that I can't wholeheartedly recommend it is because I would recommend the Veil of Eternity before that. So that is Seasons. Uh, the final physical copy of a game I have here is uh, Corridor. So I play this one um, at two players, which is definitely the, the optimal player count. Um, I've not played it at four, but I have played it at three with a, I believe it's an official variant, which I didn't feel was quite right. Um, finally managed to play this one at two. Um, and uh, I'm lukewarm at best on this one, to be honest. Uh, I think this is the style of abstract game that I tend to bounce off because it's kind of one of those games that make you feel kind of crappy if you win and also crappy if you lose because you you kind of there's this point in the game where you know you're quite beyond that point of no return you just know the game's over and a lot of the time it's the decisions you're making are quite ethereal and you're not really sure how it's going to work out it might work out it might not work out I don't know maybe I've just not fully understood the game yet so I'm not really understood those nuances and how the game operates um, but I'm just not feeling it at the moment and um, I'm just not quite seeing where that depth of gameplay is but I'm sure uh, a corridor expert would um, would challenge me on that but okay I will play it some more hopefully uh, some of the layers of the game will start to reveal themselves to me but again at this point I'm just not quite I'm seeing it or feeling it but that is uh, Corridor. Um, I also played a three-player game of Planet Unknown. So this is a, a friend's copy. Um, and I really like this uh, Polyomino style game with a sci-fi theme. Um, I do like the way that the boards have different um, kind of scenarios on them or different um, different things you need to try and overcome. You know, the board I had was split into four. And in each of those courses, I couldn't have certain resources in them, which became a bit more of a difficult thing to manage. You know, you're climbing a bunch of tracks, which I tend to like. And um, this was a really high scoring game. I think we all did really well. And I didn't quite manage to um, to beat the more experienced players. But I thought I did well, but didn't turn out to be the case. But still, I really enjoyed it. I like polyomino games in general. And with the additional touches, with that lazy Susan, the tile drafting and always being involved, um, I think this one's a really good one. So that is Planet 
unknown. So that's it really, that's all the games that I have played. No, not too many, but again, I'm still trying to get through that massive um, UK Games Expo haul. So I just dropped some games there um, to try and catch up and uh, get those reviews out or get some thoughts on those games out um, before time goes too fast. So there we go. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you have, please be sure to hit like and subscribe to the channel and check out my other content too. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time on Chairman of the Board. Bye-bye.